Hey guys, welcome back to the show. And today we're going to be doing a bit of a different video. It's not going to be an opinion video. It's a bit of a review and opinion or hot take about gear. Um, this is a Minolta Dynax 5 with a 50 millimeter f1.7. <clears throat> I have never shot Minolta cameras before. And recently at work, I work at camera store and camera rescue here in Finland. We uh, hit a gold mine basically of new old stock cameras. We found a thousand plus almost 2000 cameras, new old stock in their box in basically a warehouse. And it's taken over a year to get them in, accept them, check them, clean them, do everything we do here, and then bring them back to the market. And in those tests, um, when you have new old stock stuff, uh, if you don't know what new old stock basically is, something that is new, but it's being old in some warehouse on the shelves for decades or more, and uh, suddenly you find them, put them in the market. Uh, new old stock means it's unused, uh, but things get aged. And these are electronic cameras. They age in uh, you know those boxes that the manufacturers would make. And some of the cameras we found were Minolta's. And one of the things I would like to talk about is the idea of imperfect gear and what happens. Um, in the testing that we do here at work, and there's no relation to work, it's not sponsored by my work, or it's not. It's just something that I see here at my current day job. Um, we go through a lot of tests to see that the gear is up to standard, from shutter speeds to be accurate, uh, to light meters to be accurate, to film advancing, film rewinding, flash features, uh, like the physical buttons and the uh, LED displays and all this stuff. And if something is off, we usually mark it as outlet. We put it aside and we think it's not sellable as the current conditions are not up to our standards. And I still think that, that we could sell some of these things and that will be at the end of this video maybe. Uh, but this camera was marked outlet and I was in the process of actually uh, substituting someone at work by grabbing the cameras that all the technicians have checked and putting stickers on them that which we there's a sticker somewhere here on the lens. Uh, we put stickers on every item so we can follow them through. Um, and this was marked outlet and I read the description and it was like LED uh, this OLCD display inside has a bleed uh, outlet. And I was like, that seems like a small issue to market outlet. I'm sure it's usable. And there was two of them and they look really small and they were going basically to outlet, which is something that then we sell sometimes secondhand for people to try to fix or live with it and shoot along. Um, and I decided, oh, there's two. I have two daughters. Why don't I pick them up and put them aside? And my daughters can have a little kit if they want to shoot some film um, ever. So I put them aside. I think a couple of weeks come by and I decide one day, oh, it's a sunny day. I kind of feel like using something else. I'm going to go swim with my kids and so on. And I decide, oh, let me grab that Minolta, but I have no lens. So I talked to one of our mechanics here, Tony, uh, who's awesome. He is really good at his job. And I tell him, hey, I have this Minolta Dynax uh, 5 that I, you know, rescued from the outlet, which is, you know, kind of funny because, you know, we rescue cameras. So I we sometimes as workers rescue from the outlet. Um, that it seems to be in good condition, but I don't have a lens. So he says, oh, funny thing, I just found a 51.7 on the outlet, which I decided to do a quick re like uh, fixing, and now it works. And this is the thing with our outlet, is that usually it doesn't have enough value for a mechanic to grab an item, fix it all the way, and put it back in service. If an item is less than 100 euros, or maybe less than 50 euros, sometimes there's no time physically for a fully employed person in Finland to pick it up, clean it, fix it, put it back in the market because there's, you're losing money basically. So those are outlet items in our eyes. Um, so he had done that to a 51.7, which in this case maybe had some haze or something. So he had opened it. So it took a long, a bit more than, you know, five minutes, but he did it. So I had this kit, which theoretically was going to be thrown in the outlet, which we do sell. So there's a value of around 10 euros per item, maybe 20 euros kit um, that I took out. And I, it was a really nice day here. The summer in Finland is amazing. If anybody tells you Finland is uh, light is bad, they have not been in Finland. Uh, during winter, the sun doesn't come out a lot, but it's always so low that you have golden hour for like four hours. That's all the light you get. 
And in the summer, because the sun doesn't really set, uh, you have kind of golden hour for hours during the night, and then it just kind of gets a little dark and then comes back out. Um, so golden hour just stays. Um, so I grab my camera, I grab two rolls of color film, in this case, Portra 400 and Lomography 800. They were the ones I had here at work um, in my desk. And I go out and this camera, first of all, uh, doesn't weigh anything. It literally weighs like 400 grams, something like that. I don't know what that is in pounds. And I go out to shoot. Um, first of all, the LED or LCD, LCD, you know, that's what you call it, um, bleed is so minimal that all I can't see is the speed that the lens is choosing. I'm in aperture uh, priority, which is what I usually shoot these kind of point and shooty cameras. And I can't see the speed, but I can tell because I know light enough what the actual usually light is. And you can even see the top display. So you could see the top, but not the inside. So this camera works absolutely fine. As you can hear, I had never used the Minolta. They have this thing that is eye focus or pre eye pre focus with the eye or I don't know. Basically, the moment I put it to my eye, you hear that it starts focusing. So it's so fast because the moment you put it up, it's already focused. You don't even have to activate with the, the half button. Um, so I really, really enjoyed this kit. I kind of built it as a kit where I don't care if it breaks because it's so inexpensive. But now that I've used it, I kind of feel like it's too good to take care of it like that, like just mistreat it. Um, I still will use it all the time, probably not all the time, but it'll be my point and shoot. But what I wanted to say is this camera that was scrapped because it was not, you know, perfect conditions. I will end up buying it. I'll pay the store because I feel guilty for getting something that actually works perfectly fine, except for one minor, um, you know, aesthetical problem. Um, works really, really well. I'll put the pictures in the video throughout, but these pictures are with my kids, just swimming in the lake, having fun. And this camera has turned out to be pretty amazing. And the thing I wanted to mention is we many times, like us users many times go for gear that is in perfect conditions, you know, like a scratch on the front of a lens is like a total, like, no way, I'm not buying that. Uh, and I have an actual Hasselblad with a scratch on the front of the lens that's like at least 10 millimeters. So like the size of your, your eye, basically vertically, uh, at least my eye. Um, and the scratch has never affected, but the resale value of that lens is zero. Nobody will buy my 150 mil. I keep it as basically a lens cap, but like this camera, has a LED or LCD bleed inside, uh, which makes it theoretically not perfect to be sold in a certain camera stores, but absolutely usable. I've seen things like one button is missing and that can be like, oh, it's outlet. I've seen uh, rubber grips being pulled out, but the rubber grip is just the aesthetic. You could put like some other piece of something. I've seen sometimes that you don't have like the battery door doesn't close properly, just a little bit of tape. The back uh, door of the camera does, you know, like doesn't close, but also some tape will help. And these things we, uh, as users and as stores, we go crazy throwing them out. And I won't say they throw them out, but you know what I mean? Like not putting them in the market because of these minor issues, but as users and the fact that we don't have a steady supply of new cameras in the market or parts in the market, we have to start accepting these uh, anomalies as the new normal, like the idea that it's okay if your camera is missing one button, that it's okay if a lens has a scratch on the front, it's okay if it has a small spot of, of fungus that you've killed already with UV light, and it's not gonna really affect images, but if it has a little bit of dust on the inside, it's okay. If the mirror, I had one of these that had like bluing in the mirror, um, it's okay because honestly, it doesn't affect the image. It's just the, you know, one of the prisms has had some deterioration or something, and it's okay to shoot that kind of stuff. And as we get, like I said, less and less gear out there, we are gonna have to live with these minor imperfections, sometimes major imperfections. But yeah, it's just something I found. I really, really enjoyed this Minolta. One thing that kind of drives you crazy if you never use one is the preview uh, aperture button is here and the camera is so teeny that the moment you grab it, 
it sounds like you're taking a picture, but all you're doing is stopping down the aperture. Let me see if I can show you guys. Um, you can see the aperture there. So if I, you see, there's no picture taking. That's a picture. But yeah, it's super fun camera. Highly recommend them. I know there's been Minolta again for years. It almost felt like a, a counterculture in the film photography world. To be honest, I think this camera is absolutely the best little point and shoot 35 camera I've ever used. I would pick this up before a Nikon F80 or a Canon 1V or 1N just because it's cheap, small, easy to use, super fun. And that eye to focus is just genius. I think whatever did that, uh, you know, had a great idea. But yeah, that's the video for today. Just want to show some images. I've been taking lots more pictures and I have a lot more videos where I'll talk about some gear I own and use. And also I wanted to say something that's super fun is when you have at your disposal all the gear you can imagine film photography wise, which I do here at work and my own collection, you end up having the most fun with the silliest of the cameras. And I'm not saying it's a bad camera, but it's kind of a silly camera when you own, you know, I have Nikon or Canon 1V, 1N, Nikon F5, F6, and all this stuff here in the shelf, but I pick the 39, 49 euro camera. And that's the price of these cameras almost new old stock. They're not more than like less than 100. This kit would be almost 100 bucks on the store and we're not the cheapest store on the internet. So just because we do a lot of stuff behind the, the doors about checking. So yeah, I suggest that some stores should start selling things that are not perfect just because I think it's important to keep the market and also keep prices. Like film prices of cameras have gone up so much there's got to be some wiggle room on the lower end with some minor issues with that are okay to live with, especially if you know. And as we at work do that diagnosis of what's wrong, you could buy something saying, well, the back button of like AF doesn't work, everything else works. Instead of paying 100 bucks, you pay, I don't know, 60 bucks. Uh, that would give another option to entry level cameras. But yeah, thanks for watching. As always, uh, these videos are basically supported by Patreons and PayPal donations. I'm leaving the links to those below. Uh, thanks for watching and see you in the next one. And I really, really enjoy taking pictures with this and sharing with you guys. Let me know what you think of the pictures. Uh, they're my kids in bathing suits, so I'll probably eliminate some that are maybe not appropriate for the internet. But yeah, thanks for watching. See you in the next one.